understanding risk and your tolerance to it. And so this is a really important aspect for individuals and families, Aaron. Um, and so I love, I'm really excited to get through this topic. For those of you that are new to, to who Aaron and I are and what our firm does with Elements in Focus, it's a, this is a, really a dialogue that Aaron and I have designed to give you golden nuggets for planning. And we're gonna focus on our investment playbook piece. If you're unfamiliar with our structure, definitely recommend watching like what is Elements in Focus. It'll give you a good high level run of what we do here. But um, when we talk about investments here with individuals and families, right? The first thing we understand uh, from, from behavioral psychology is people will talk through what they understand and know. Sure. And oftentimes it's what we get off CNBC or from the around the water cooler, right? It's like, oh, we got to buy ABC stock. That's the hot stock today. Uh, unfortunately, when we don't understand risk and what that actually is and what we are tolerant to, then we can get ourselves into a lot of trouble. And so, Aaron, do us a massive favor. If someone's coming in and they're wanting to talk about returns or buying the next hot stop, hot stock, right? Or they're looking to get the maximum amount of return in their portfolio, but they don't understand these key elements. How's a conversation going? What are we looking to help educate our families through? Um, a lot of it is asking more detailed questions, Grant, about where they want to go on their financial journey. Uh, planning with the end in mind. Is there a specific amount of assets that you want to leave to, you know, your kids or a church or a charity? And once you understand kind of the, the grand scheme, the grand journey of what the family's trying to accomplish, then you can set the roadmap on how, how to get there. And there's a lot of preconceived notions, right, in the industry like, hey, we're getting closer to retirement, so now we need to be more conservative with our assets. That's not necessarily the case. If you've got good income streams through social securities and pensions um, that's covering your standard of living, you might not necessarily need to be more conservative with your assets. Or uh, on the flip side, maybe you haven't saved enough for retirement and now you're taking on more risk than what you really need to accomplish your goal. Uh, maybe you don't need to have a, an all equity type portfolio that's swinging with the S&P 500. Maybe you need to have a balanced model because it's still going to help you hit your goal uh, without taking on as much risk. And it's really starting to figure out where your end in mind is and what you're trying to accomplish so that you can set the true roadmap to get there. The other side of it, Grant, that we see a lot especially when markets are going up and down, is people are very psychologically, emotionally attached to that statement value. And we go through a process called a risk tolerance questionnaire every year with the families we serve. And I can tell you to a T how people are gonna answer those questions based on the market. If the market's going well, their risk tolerance score is gonna be higher. If the market's going bad, their risk tolerance score is gonna go lower. And it is all feeling emotional based and you're not putting any factual data based evidence to assessing risk tolerance. And so there's so much that goes into making sure that you have the right risk tolerance, making sure you have the right ability to accept and assess risk. And so um, you need to understand what that is. And if you have questions, Grant and I would be more than happy to make sure you're on the right track. Yeah, Aaron, you made a really good point. It, oftentimes, if there's not a good process in place and we don't understand what we're trying to accomplish in our journey, then we are we get kind of whimsical with the market itself, right? There's there's no there's no grounding to what we're trying to accomplish, and oftentimes we will become as emotional and our emotions will be dictated by market movement or by uh, other factors economically or politically. And so I think what Aaron's really getting down to, folks, is this, and that is, first and foremost, when whenever you're picking an investment of any kind, make sure you understand what you want to accomplish with those dollars, right? Absolutely. Uh, we call it never money. If you're not going to touch the money, it's going to another generation. You can be far more speculative, right? You can you can put things in, in more of, like Aaron said, the more market growth uh, asset categories, right? If you're looking at things for income, 
and your your tummy gets upset anytime that money goes down, right? Well, maybe you are a little more conservative, and we shouldn't let greed take take over, right? We shouldn't let the market going higher catch us off guard or make us feel like we're left behind because realistically, there's to get that type of uh, increase, right? There is downside. So it's really understanding where you're going first and then really understanding and evaluating what it takes in order for you to achieve that goal and what your stomach will allow you to work with and what's going to keep you up at night, right? Because at the end of the day, more wealth and the roller coaster ride to get it is not always something families in retirement want to ride. And so, yeah. like Aaron stated, go ahead. One other point, too, is the type of vehicle you're invested in. And so um, maybe you have a Roth IRA. And Grant, you mentioned this, the never money. Uh, your Roth IRA is tax free. So maybe you take on a little bit more risk inside of that Roth IRA because you're trying to maximize and capitalize on the tax free growth and the tax free distributions. Um, and if you're using your IRA as an income stream, maybe you have that more of a balanced model. So it's producing income and leveling out the ups and downs of the market. And so the vehicles that you're invested in also matter as well. And it it is not just a, you know, looking at things, as we say here in the farmland of Indiana in silos, but it's actually looking at the entire farm operation and making sure the operation is holistically working well together. 100% agreed, Aaron. 100% agreed. Yeah. And so if you're looking for someone to help you evaluate this and evaluate where you're at on your journey to kind of do a, a deeper, uh, more analytical and more emotional dive into risk tolerance, give us a call, 800-928-4001. One of the advisors on our team, the talented team members we have, would love to have that conversation with you. Also, if you have just basic questions on risk tolerance, shoot us an email. Talk to FEG at yourlifeafterwork.com. We'd be more than happy to connect and answer some of those questions. Uh, for that, though, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being with us. We look forward to seeing you in the next one. Hi, I'm Sam Neff, Certified Financial Planner with the Financial Enhancement Group. If you're interested where you stand personally, please click the link below and you can create a profile and a member of our team will reach out to talk about where you stand within the five critical elements on your financial journey. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to speaking to you soon.